We're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We are uh, set to look at what the papers have for us this morning. Our guest is always standing by. Ezekiel and I took, uh, will be joining us when we are done looking at uh, those uh, headlines, of course. Uh, we'll start off with the Nation newspaper. Interesting uh, take um, on the paper this morning. It's still, uh, paper is still, um, <laughs> you know, giving prior attention to the People's Democratic Party. And uh, like we analyzed a couple of days ago, they, uh, like I said a couple of days ago, the nation, this is just a media, media review, the nation has uh, almost every day talked about uh, the situation in the PDP. In fact, they use this term PDP crisis. Today is the first time in a while I've noticed that they didn't use, uh, say, PDP in crisis, but they're still showing uh, or giving attention to the situation in the People's Democratic Party. Um, Mark and Day leads Southwest PDP on I U must go call. Mark and Day leads Southwest PDP on I U must go call. Of course, this is true. Um, I'm just saying the paper has given its top space on the front page to the situation in PDP for the past how many weeks? Uh, now, the writer to that story, or your governor to Atiku, party must be restructured. Chairman's exit must follow due process. All right. More from the nation, Akeridolu Adebayo head teams for Tinubu. Puhari to present budget to National Assembly next month. Oyetola Dereke bicker over report of overvoting. Yeah. Uh, buyers of seized Lagos properties to pay 2001 price. Lucky them. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to put it. Uh, banks to stop PTA, BTA payments in cash as scarcity persists. I think this was covered by some papers uh yesterday all right uh, more from the nation two scientific works win ten thousand or hundred thousand dollar nlng price and police kill five kidnapped suspects uh stories on the front page of uh the nation let's go over to the punch with these uh, headlines a big story there the kicker pdp crisis the headline says atiku wabara meet aggrieved governors marking the demands I use exit and right as to that former POT chair Jibreen forced to resign party still in crisis says but a judge a Southwest PDP agrees to back ex VP uh, or your governor seeks restructuring of National Working Committee indeed a marking they described Atiku as the incoming president of Nigeria in 2023 uh, I use resignation achievable must be negotiated to avert crisis Atiku uh, Benway Senator that's that's a uh, a remarkable one, or that is worth noting that Atiku uh, said that. More from the, the punch. FGEU AFD complete 104 billion naira electricity agreement. Senate to scrap over 400 MDAs in 2023. Is that too little, too late? Uh, bank deposits rise by 24% to 42 trillion naira. So people are not spending these days or what? <laughs> uh, PSC chairman. That's Police Service Commission. Smith resigns amidst police recruitment crisis. Okay, of course, a bit of an issue between the Police Service Commission and the Inspector General of Police. Pro-Chancellors, VCs intervene in ASU's seven-month strike. Pro-Chancellors, VCs intervene in ASU's seven-month strike. Will they be paying ASU themselves? I'm sure that maybe that's the only intervention that's who want to hear. Um, AKC road collapses, motorists groan, see government's intervention. And of course, uh, you can see a picture there on the front page of the punch doing some human angle stories right there. A uh, picture of the governor of AKC state uh, staring at the road in shock, uh, in shock. And it's quite a bizarre one. Uh, uh, I mean, if no life was lost, then that is a big testimony. But you can see the quality of that road. Look at it. Look at it. Look at the, the sand underneath just a very thin layer of asphalt. It's what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm sure someone was paid to do that road. This is the quality of road that the government does for its citizens. Look at sand. You don't even have stones, no uh, gravels, no, um, what do you call it again? Uh, no base, nothing, no stone base. All you have is shaft sand. Then a thin layer of asphalt in the city of Donnell Road. 
So when there's water running on there, it's erosion and everything, it will cave in. What a shame. And the governor looking at the road in shock. I mean, I don't know if this road was done in his time. I don't know. I can't judge him. But um, governments need to do better. If it wasn't done in his time, it was done in someone's time. Did a person who was governor then not inspect to see that the road was properly done? Because you're paying for a quality road, you must have a quality road. Look at that. Look at that. What a shame. All right, do we have more? Uh, I hope it won't take them one year to fix. So, I mean, if you come to Lagos State, the uh, Eco Bridge has been closed for some time now after a fire incident there at a place called Apombo. And uh, till now, I don't think that bridge is open. It's affecting traffic flow from the mainland to the island parts of Lagos, uh, affecting economic activities and I'm reducing all all round productivity. I don't know why it's taking this long. I'm not an expert, but I do sincerely hope that that will get that bridge gets done quickly. In the same vein, I hope that this security road will not take uh, forever. Uh, I have to move on. I guess we'll provide us analysis of, of our stories. But more from the punch, tackling security, can uh, Anglican primate tell federal government? Customs intercepts 80,000 litre tankers uh, carrying dirty diesel. Who imported the dirty diesel? Uh, or is it produced in the country? Maybe it's uh, <laughs> one of these locally refined products. And SARS, panel awards 289 million naira compensation to 74 victims. I have a personal story I won't share and now. Me on some other day. And uh, that strikes, strikes me. All right, more from the next paper. Let's go to the leadership this morning. The leadership um, has an interesting, interesting front page headline. That's the leadership newspaper. All right, what the leadership is saying on its front page, uh, the kicker to that big headline, 1995 Derba Hotel bombing. 1995 Derba Hotel bombing. I can't talk until U.S. Embassy speaks, accused ex-U.S. Envo envoy. I can't talk until U.S. Embassy speaks, ex-accused or accused ex-U.S. envoy. All right. And the writer to that, uh, I can't recall the incident. Madi Shehu is talking about uh, Kaduna, ex-military governor, General Jafaru Issa. Police, DSS, U.S. Embassy, keep mum. I'm sure our guests will remember this, uh, this, this episode quite well. FG orders buyers of seized Lagos properties to pay 2001 price. Uh, UK Police Judicial Office passed a buck on Aquarium Matters Health. Hmm. Revenue shortfall, Senate backs measure of MDAs. Dugara Babacher continue to or continue agitation against APC Muslim Muslim ticket. Police Service Commission Chairman resigns and five die in Parchi boat mishap. Really sad. It's the story is on the front page of the leadership newspaper. All right, we have the last paper for uh, consideration this morning, being Daily Trust, a big one on the front page of uh, Daily Trust, uh, call for state police, ACF, NEF, Afeni Fere, Pandef, back Northern Governors, Monarchs. So it's uh, interesting that uh, it's now a national thing um, right there. The riders to that, Ekiti passes bill, Kanu, in two weeks. Jigawa to follow soon. It's uh, nullity without National Assembly approval, Professor Yadudu. Well, you know what they say, <laughs> uh, nature boss vacuum. I guess we'll talk some more about this when we put him on. A Southwest PDP meets Atiku, demands IU's resignation. How Smith was forced to resign as PSC chairman. I don't know if this is unconnected with his tussle uh, with the IGP over recruitment. Uh, police kill kidnappers sharing ransom in forest. All right, uh, what happened to the ransom? Buhari to present 19.76 trillion naira. 2023 budget in October, this according to the Speaker of Nigeria's House of Reps, Bajabia Mila. Senators OK, Orosanye report over 400 MDAs risk scrapping. <laughs> uh, my Nigeria French agency signed 25 million euro deal for power transmission projects. 23 Abuja Kaduna train passengers still in captivity 186 days after. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. All right, let's um, say good morning to our guest analyst, um, 
Ezekiel Nyaitu. Good morning to you, Mr. Nyaitu. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Have to be nice to be here. Good morning. <laughs> Fantastic. Great to have you. Great to have you. Great to have you. Um, let's start with this uh, this call by the northern governors in the country um, for state policing. We'll discuss this later on the program. But the interesting aspect of this is that uh, uh, Daily Trust is telling us that other groups in the country, ACF, NEF, Afeni, Ferry, and Pandem, these are the major groups. I think the one that's missing there is Ohanese and Igbo, are also joining this call. I mean, when last did we say unified front from the socio-political organizations around the country saying the same thing at the same time? Yeah, uh, I think the concept of um, state policing has been uh, almost unanimously adopted nationwide uh, uh, by virtually all the divides. Uh, because we've come to realize that the security that we have is not being handled the way that national interest comes beyond any other parochial, including individual interest. If you really look into the, the, the security concerns that we have, you realize that there's a lot of um, discrepancies. There's a lot of um, unexplained um, you know, pockets. And you can't really see that commitment to the welfare of the people, including the North. And um, I think each person is coming to a point where they are like, look, why don't we just do what is corporate or global best practice? Why don't we have the national police looking at certain infrastructure that they look at? And then let's go down, drill it down to state police. And if possible, the county or what you may look at as the local government police because abroad, you even have certain places like campuses having their own police system, depending on the size and everything. Let's redefine, you know, uh, what policing is all about. Because right now, policing is about, about power, about control, and not about the general good of the people. So I think that even the Ohaneze that is not um, listed, they have taken a position long before today, to the best of my knowledge, uh, which is why, why would you have um, the Ebube, Ebube Agu if it's not something that they subscribe to? So I think that um, in the constitution, re constitution review, we have to look at that, um, you, know, you know, the, the general agreement, the unanimous agreement within all sides of the divide uh, on the need for state police. Hmm. All right. Another one coming on the front page of uh, the Daily Trust is uh, also echoed by a few other papers. Um, Senators O.K. or Ross and report uh, say over 400 MDAs risk scrapping. I think it's good that the, the Daily Trust mentioned or Ross and report because some papers didn't mention it. For instance, uh, leadership said uh, Senate backs merger of MDAs because of revenue shortfall. So this is the way the leadership needs to put it. It's revenue shortfall, Senate backs merger of MDAs. Uh, the Stephen Rosanay report has been submitted to uh, President Gulag Jonathan. Or let me say the federal government in April 2012, precisely April uh, 16, 2012. And uh, fast forward to 2022 is when the, uh, the authorities, National Assembly, the federal government are considering implementing. Is this a sincere implementation or is this a sinking man grasping at whatever he can grasp at? Uh, to survive? It's our understanding. I, I, I'll really look at things holistically. It's our understanding of the concept of government and governance. The day we realize that governance is about the management of the goods of the generality of the people in their larger interest and not an opportunity to serve personal interest. When we have that perspective, would realize that when you look at governments generally, I've been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of strategizing, a lot of research as somebody who wants to be the governor of a state. And I'm asking myself exactly where is the problem? And I think the problem is the entitlement of the title. The entitlement of the title. Once you call, you are called a DG. There are certain things that must come, you know, with that office. But if those entitlements didn't come with the title, then you could have the subdivisions and not have a problem. 
So coming back to Orasanya's report on the measure of um, all these parastatals and um, lots of, you know, the first thing is that I agree with the report to a great extent. There are just certain subdivisions that have a lot of subheads, that have a lot of budget, and you really can't have the second arm, which is absolutely necessary in any setup. What is the second arm? The deliverables. What are the targets? What are the essence? What are the things that we are getting from them? You can't. It, you, you discover that the deliverables is employment, create employment. And that's not, you, you can't have public funds going into create employment just to, and these are not even the people that are getting into certain productivity within, 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 within the, the governance structure. It's, it's about creating employment. It's about benefiting your people. It's about bringing them in and rewarding them on a, on public accounts, which is unacceptable. So I think that looking at that, I've taken time to look at a good section of that report, and I think that any focused government will adopt a good section of those reports because a lot of this, by the time you look at the list of the, of the MDAs, you, you feel scandalized because it's like, what? You mean this exists? Where? How? What? They exist. Yes, they do. They are collecting salary. Yes, they do. They are paying rent. Yes, they do. There's a whole lot of entitlements attached to each of the offices. And what is the outcome? Zero. So I think that uh, they should implement, whether it is as um, a way of, um, you know, like, you know, how do I damage? I, I won't even call it damage control. Whatever it's worth, let them look at it and implement as much as they can. But I can assure you that the next government is not going to be like the past government. It's going to be more focused. It's going to be more people-oriented. It's going to be more purpose fit and going to understand the essence of government and governance. I can tell you that for free. It's not going to be one of these two big people that come and do same old, same old. There is a change that has begun and it is un unstoppable at this point. You know, uh, uh, it's interesting that the, for what you've said, the um, this particular uh, uh, Aurora Sanye report was 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 was, uh, was submitted to President Jonathan in 2012, April 16, after being the uh, committee headed by the former head of service of the Federation Civil Aurora was set up in 2011. Um, when the pre this administration came in in 2014, they said they were going to um, implement. This was in 2014. Uh, they announced a decision to implement the, uh, this was last year rather, they said they were going to implement the white paper, all right, the white paper of that report. But interestingly, another committee was, was set up to make recommend recommendations based on the white paper of that report. I don't know, you are, you are uh, an administrator, you'll be in the circles of power. What exactly is this white paper thing? But before, before you go to that, um, we're told that, they want to reduce the agencies, uh, departments, and ministries created since 2014. The Buhari administration came into power on the back of, you know, reducing resources, and the, they, they started with a push of trying to cut, you know, government spending, government excesses. But if you look at the, <laughs> the ministries, departments, and agencies created since 2014, they've actually increased what you had before. Um, that report recommended that uh, of the 541 statutory and non statutory federal government parasitals, 541, they to 541, and we're still where we are. Um, out of those 541, um, 263 uh, statutory agencies should be reduced to 161, and uh, 38 agencies should be abolished, 52 agencies merged, and 14 reverted back to departments in ministries. You know, so, so that is that. Now, subsequently, the white paper was report, reported and issued in March 2014. And it's taken March 2014 till uh, 2021 for them to now set up another committee to make recommendations based on uh, the white paper. But another interesting uh, point I also like you to speak to is that President Buhari um, created five new federal ministries. In um, it was reported in 2020, 2019. You know, you look at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs um, and Disaster Management and Social Development, Ministry of Police Affairs. Uh, special special duties and international affairs, aviation and power, you know. And some of uh, we used to ask, why did we have aviation as a separate ministry when it's transportation? Why do we have humanitarian ministry when we have maybe, for instance, uh, NEMA, you know, 
Why do we have Office of uh, the Special Advisor on Diaspora Affairs when the Minister of Foreign Affairs is there? You know, and sometimes you don't know who is who. <laughs> you would have to agree who will speak when. You know, so what are your thoughts on this? How many agencies okay. and ministries? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, the way government operates, if people understand it, is that government has to be dynamic and not static for the simple reason that government is created to solve problems. And sometimes problems come unanticipated and government needs to set up a system, a structure, depending on the nature of the problem. But that system or structure serves that purpose. Certain things are statutory. For instance, education will always be there. And, you know, um, the health care, housing, you know, all that social infrastructure, the road network, you know, security, the um, welfare. So there are certain things that are statutory, but from time to time, certain things come up. For instance, there was the Petroleum Equalization Agency that was set up because they realized that when you bring petrol, it comes to the center, which is like Lagos, and it has to be taken from Lagos to you know places like uh, maybe um, Katsina or Sokoto or Maiduguri, and that is different from taking trucking it to Ogun State or, or your state or any of the neighboring states. So that differential in transportation has to be imputed in the cost. And, you know, government is to provide a certain level for, you know, the generality of the people and fuel was something that was, or power was something that, that um, applies to all. So on account of that, that agency becomes a necessary agency, you know, to come up and handle that specific problem. Now, by the time government now comes to a point of saying, for whatever it's worth, we are not, we've, uh, we've taken ourselves off that, um, we've deregulated that, that sector and left it to be private sector driven. Most of the time, the agency created does not, like, get extinguished. They remain, even when they do next to nothing. And secondly, a lot of these agencies, some of them are created on account of the problem that exists within the ministry. And then you have somebody that comes in and is favorably disposed to a particular person. So he kind of carves that out so that he has his own command and control as distinct from the boss that was there before. And that leads to duplication and a lot of times another time it comes with the, the the zeal of a particular you know person in power he says look we must get into this nuclear thing nuclear thing nuclear thing or we want to get into a certain it mode because that's the world of the future so instead of putting them because of bureaucracy they kind of take them out and create them as a certain agency so what a reasonable government should do at all times I'm never against creating new agencies, never, if you are responding to the problem per time. But what you should do is always profile and always critique and always look into all the agencies periodically, you know, and for each budget review session, ask yourself, which are the relevant agencies? What can we merge? What can we set aside? There's nothing wrong with creating a new agency, for instance, when insecurity was becoming a major, major, major problem, or we are having a lot of problems with corruption, then you may have to create the EFCC as different from ICPC, as different from NFIU. These are different arms that do different things, but because you really want to take these things head on, so you put them separate. And then you now have maybe the police is there, and then the vigilante is there, and you know, but they, you must come at all times to critique them again and never be afraid to bring back to one unit. But then you have this concept of um, I'm tenured, you know, I'm given this, this appointment for four years and I've just done two years. I still have two more years. So if you fix me, take me back to an existing agency, what is going to be my status? Who cares what your status is? Hmm. All right. And then the legal Interesting. In, very interesting, very interesting, and uh, uh, so much I've enjoyed your analysis there. But finally, this report, Orosai, was submitted in 2012, 
uh, a committee uh, was set up to uh, to review and have a report on that Arasa Committee report called Ama Pepo Committee. Um, between 2012 and 2021, they were to look at the, the ministries, panel agencies created. That was last year. Ama Pepo Committee has submitted its own report on the civil Arasa report. And Obele Okeke Committee has now been created uh, and uh, has done a, a draft white paper on the Ama Pepo Committee that submitted a report on the Arasa Committee. So we're waiting for them to implement. So what, 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 what is up with this? No, you are waiting for the committee that will review the work of the current committee that is set up. Yes, so three committees it, now. Yeah, yeah. No, we are waiting for the fourth one to take care of this. <laughs> and then make it. <laughs> it, 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 it's the concept of political will. I actually, it's just that I'd, I'd made a commitment that because President Buhari had signed the Electoral Act that I have forgiven every wrong he did in the past, including the ones he would do till he leaves office. So, uh, and I still keep to that commitment. But, but I, I feel a lot of times, I, I, I think that there's a disconnect between the Buhari that was seeking office and the Buhari that is in office. I'm not talking in terms of uh, all those uh, conspiracy theories, whether he is this or that. No, I, I'm just thinking that age has played a game on this man. And he is, he's not so forceful, he's not so target-driven, he's not so, we don't really see him as taking on to make a legacy with respect to governance. I don't see it because all these ones of setting committee to review committee is just time-wasting as far as I'm concerned and lack of political will to get done what should be done. But if I were close to President Buhari, I'll tell him that no man stands a better chance of getting this thing done right now than himself because it's like eggshells. They're going to step on things, you know, but for several reasons. Number one, he's not seeking a third term. Number two, he is respected to a great extent. So there are three things he can do and get away with it. And number three, he wants to leave a certain legacy behind that he did this. I think Mr. Mr. President should actually sit down and think of what what could be what would be his exit strategy and what would be his legacies? He has to re really sit down. He has children. He might not be reading these letters or this um, listening to us, you know, do this review. But he has friends. He, he has relations. He has relatives, particularly relatives, particularly children, who at this point in time should sit down and think of the father and think of his re retirement and say, what would be his? What would he be remembered for? Nigerians have very short memory and Nigerians are very forgiving. The president can take one, two, three decisions now and everything he did wrong in the past will be forgiven and forgotten. Give us clean um, 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 electoral process, no matter what it takes, give us clean, free, fair, credible elections, you'll be hailed as a hero. Number two, look at this report, take that decision that somebody coming in and uh, you know thinking of second term may not be able to want to rock the boat. If you do these two bold things, I think that he'll be, he'll be remembered on the right side of history. Right. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, let's go out to the Punch newspaper. Um, uh, Tiko Bakar has been uh, on uh, a, how do I call it again, a wooing tour. You know when a woman is trying to, a man is trying to woo a woman. <laughs> he's, be, he's been on a, a chiking tour of the PDP in the south south uh, western part of Nigeria. Um, but he, he met with the Oyo State um, or the Southwest APs, PDP stakeholders in Oyo State yesterday, not in Lagos State. And uh, would you say this is a catch-22 situation for uh, Shea Makinde um, and even um, uh, Ayo Fayeshe and then the Oshun State Governor? Because, I mean, they can't say they won't turn up for, uh, for, for this meeting. Indeed, Makinde had to address... Uh, uh, Atiku as the incoming president of Nigeria in 2023, though he still said, Ayu must go. But interesting one, uh, from that meeting, Atiku is saying that Ayu's resignation is achievable but must be negotiated to avert crisis. So what are your thoughts on this um, visit to the southwestern part of Nigeria by Atiku? You see, there's a, there's a perspective to all these things that um, um, Atiku is not looking at, and he needs to do that very fast because there's something he's losing faster than he knows. 
You know, one of the things that was given to Atiku was that, or is that he is a bridge builder. And that at a time like this, where Nigeria is so fragmented, where there's so much divisions, that you need a man that with the capacity to build the bridges and bring all the sides of the divide to bring back Nigeria to, uh, to her feet. And then you cannot resolve a little problem that concerns you and your election and your future. I don't see, I think that one night, one night, one meeting, where Atiku calls Ayu privately, calls Wike privately, the, the three of them, no other person, sit down in a room and say, guys, we're hurting ourselves. What do we do? Politics is about compromise. Politics is about negotiation. Politics is about give and take. That is what politics is all about. Not my way or the highway. So, guys, what do we do? This thing has come to a point. It's like the president and Asu. All those, oh, minister, go and negotiate this, go and do all those things are just, yeah, you're wasting time. I believe that if they sit down, the three of them, man to man, eyeball to eyeball, in one night, this matter is resolved. And you get a man saying, um, President, let me tell you this. This is what happened. This man did this to me. What does he mean? He was looking at the other one, knowing that before the meeting, there's, there's always a meeting before meeting. Atiku will first meet um, Ayu privately and say, guy, please help me. I beg you. If you want me to kneel down and beg you, I'll beg you. If we need to make a compromise, let's make a compromise. When we go there, you know, your weaker is hurt. Please, I beg you. Whatever he says, don't flip. Don't lose it. I beg you. Okay? Then he, he has a private meeting with I, um, uh, Wike himself and says, my guy, I know how you feel. I understand this whole thing. Let's see what we can do. Let's have this meeting. We'll grind it out. You know, we have a bigger future. We have a bigger stake. We can't leave this thing for these people. If you leave, it will hurt us, all, all, all of us. You can't imagine this. Please, let's... And then they now have that tripartite meeting. Do you understand me? The moment they come out of that meeting, I can tell you that the problem would have been solved because they don't need any further... Wicked does not need to consult anybody. Do you understand me? As soon as he leaves there, before any, because nobody knows about the meeting, he's going to give a call to, um, uh, you know, Mackinde and them um, or Tom and, you know, all this. And then, he will now, then this guy will now say, then Ayu will now say, look, this thing is getting out of hand, my guy. I know how you will feel. I know that this is, this guy is just trying to bully and everything. But let's look at our article. We are losing it. Why don't we just think about him? So what do we do? We want to make a compromise. Let's make it. Let's just move forward. And then we now come together. I see me meeting where it has already been resolved. And then this matter is resolved. And it's, why don't they just call me as a consultant? Let me fix this. Let them pay me money. Make a take and do election. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, a song, you know, that I can really uh, uh, bring in here to describe what's happening is a song that has been playing on radio over the last year or two. If you leave me a year ago, they... <laughs> maybe that's, no, no. Uh, that's what Atiku no, is singing no. right now. If you leave me a year ago, no, no. You see, when, when, you get, when you get a ticket... Atiku knows this more than me now. When you get a ticket, you can run your campaign. Do you understand me? What did Jonathan do? It's just that there was a kind of backstabbing somewhere along the line. When the party was becoming impossible, Atiku just, uh, um, Jonathan just created TAM and ran his campaign. People don't understand what campaign means and party. There are certain lines that people do, have not learned how to, you know, put situate where they belong. Yeah, but Atiku, Atiku made one statement, sir, that um, Ayu can only be removed by amending the party constitution. It's one of the things he said yesterday. No, 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 no. That's not correct. Any man at any time can decide, you know, in the larger interest of this stuff, let me step aside. It's a personal decision. It's a sacrifice in the larger interest of the party. A decision has been put already. Okay, when he leaves by right, the, 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 the person that should take over is the deputy. Okay, right. Now, that deputy is, is, is an understanding. Politics is understanding. Do you understand me? That deputy can step aside so that the next person comes up and then... He can be brought back. It's 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 negotiable. Politics is 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 negotiation. 
That's what it is. Is an under, right. is understanding between right. them. Isn't it? Yeah, we have to say thank you. Uh, a fantastic analysis from you this morning, as always. And we can't wait to have you back. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much. I'm always grateful. And God bless you. All right. All right. That's it. Isaac Lanier took a public affairs analyst right here on the off the press segment on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We have uh, today in history, of course, to tell you what happened on the 15th day in September uh, many years ago. We'll be right back after this to dive straight into our first major conversation. Please stay with us.